Uh, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson is the ranking member of the House Science Committee. Thank you very much. I didn't, there it is. Uh, thank you very much to all of the people here. And let me say that Mr. Hall, who is chair of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee in the House, is unable to be here this morning. But we work in partnership, as I am the ranking member, in strong support of the space program. And this is a very special day for us because we are going into an area just as we went into the area when we started space exploration. We are going now to the next level. We know that what was done in the past has been the most successful research in this country that we've invested in. What we have been concerned about is preserving our expertise and making sure that the people who had trained, the scientists that inspired our young people for the next level will remain in place. We considered this somewhat of a long time coming because we have known for some time that we needed to take this step. We were simply waiting for the White House's approval and we are so pleased that the White House has joined us in where we want to go. And we are, we are very excited about this next phase. We know that research means exploring the unknown. We know what we've done in exploring the unknown from the past. We don't know what we'll find for the future, but we are confident that we will find new information that will clearly take the lives of our people from around the world to the next level. So we are very excited about now. And we are very pleased that Administrator Bolden can move forward with his vision. And we'll keep all of our very qualified staff in place. We want to thank them for what they've contributed to the space program already. And we want to thank them for being patient enough to wait until we could come to this level where we are now. We hope that we will be successful in making sure that we can get the minimum, at least, amount of money to go forth in a very vigorous and successful the manner. explanation of the entire system uh, to come from the number one person at NASA, the administrator of NASA, General Charlie Bolden. Thank you, Senator, and I, I will, uh, as I am wont to do, I want to thank all the members of the Congress. Uh, the next chapter of America's space exploration story is being written today. Today I'm pleased to announce that NASA has selected the design of its new deep space system that will take American astronauts further into space than any nation has gone before and create jobs right here at home. Private companies are preparing to take over transportation to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit. Satellites are on their way to Jupiter and the moon, and plans for human mission to an asteroid and onto Mars are taking shape. In combination with the crew capsule already under development, commercialization of astronaut travel to low Earth orbit, extension of activities of the International Space Station on a fresh focus on new technologies, the new Space Launch System, or SLS, is key to implementing the plan laid out by President Obama and Congress in the bipartisan 2010 NASA Authorization Act. The SLS will be the cornerstone of our deep space human exploration program. President Obama has challenged us at NASA to be bold and to dream big, and that's exactly what we do. While I was proud to fly on the space shuttle, tomorrow's explorers will dream of one day walking on Mars. The selection of the vehicle needed to transport our astronauts into deep space is one of the most important decisions to be made this decade. And it requires a major commitment on the part of the American taxpayer. And that's why the administration insisted on doing the due diligence required so that we could get it right. But we've also been, been making steady progress toward realizing president, the President's and Congress's vision of deep space exploration while doing so in a more affordable way. We've been driving down the cost on the Orion and SLS contracts by adopting new ways of doing business and have achieved hundreds of millions of dollars of savings each year. We're also changing the way we spend the taxpayers' money by providing more transparency and increasing competition. 
We're handing off transportation to the International Space Station to our private sector partners so we can focus on deep space exploration. We're already building a space capsule, the MPCV, to transport our astronauts into deep space. Now, we've selected a heavy lift rocket to carry the crew and capsule to destinations in space no nations have ever gone before. Our decision to go with a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen launch vehicle system was based on NASA's analysis to reduce cost, increase flexibility, and leverage the U.S. leadership in this technology. The development flights will take advantage of existing boosters and other hardware, while companies compete for advanced boosters to enable greater capability for our new heavy lift rocket. The first development flight or mission is targeted for 2017, with additional flights following that will get us on target to reach an asteroid and even Mars. We believe the President's request for, space launch, for the Space Launch System and the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle in 2012 are at the appropriate levels. And today, the Administration has made a long-term commitment to these critical deep space exploration vehicles. In addition to these two building blocks, we're investing in the technologies to allow humans to live and work in deep space, which will allow us to reach destinations such as an asteroid and Mars. This is a great day for NASA, I think, for NASA and the nation. And I really do want to thank the bipartisan leadership in the Congress for getting us to this day.